Uh, Alright guys, uh, welcome back to some more Ultimate General Civil War. Um, in the last one we did Ambush Convoy, and we walked away from that one pretty good. Captured uh, quite a few people, about 6,375, and 2,000 some rifles. And we've got a pretty good setup for Shiloh, which is what we're going to do today. Um, I've rebuilt the army a little bit. I put another point into army organization, and we're going to go ahead and just jump right into it. I'm hoping I can do this in one shot without saving or any monkey business. We do outnumber them a little bit, but the last two minor battles whittled them down a little bit as far as their numbers. And we have a lot of troops. Um. I anticipate by the time of Antietam, we probably will not have the numerical advantage anymore. We will be outnumbered by a lot. But we're going to enjoy this while it lasts because not very often do we have the numerical advantage. But I'm going to put Yule's Brigade, Siegfried's Germans, and a lot of the bigger, heavier brigades on the right hand side. I'm going to take some of my smaller ones and put them on the left. Brought a lot of artillery, but not all of it is horse-drawn yet. Normally that first perk I, I put right towards horse-drawn artillery. But we do have a lot of cavalry, which is going to help out in the beginning phase on the right. On this side. Union skirmishers deploy in these fields in like a fish hook shape and there's two more brigades bedded down here and here and they're kind of in a, a semicircle but we gotta wrap up these skirmishers quick and then get the men deployed into a battle line and then try to hit them from two sides at the same time we'll probably probably start that on the right when we get everybody in line and then we'll push in at the same time on the left. But I'm going to try to avoid capturing the actual point of Shiloh Church. Because when we do that, the game wants to immediately like pull you on to Bragg's sector in the second half of the battle. So we're going to come in, cross the creek here, push these guys through, but stay off of the point and try to destroy as many of these units as we can before the timer runs out. So we're going to go ahead and just start getting everybody moving. Put these three brigades there. Definitely some of my smaller units. But they're going to be the reserve. It's going to take a while for these guys on the left to get moved up. I'm not going to try to engage everybody, and I want to position them so when we go into the second half of the battle, we're already positioned to take out a lot of the guys on the right-hand side of the hornet's nest. So I'm going to put a good number of brigades over here once we destroy the majority of their units. But... They will spawn more when we come back to the sector after the second half and the third half. We're gonna go ahead and just try to charge out these skirmishers if we can. Seems like we're doing pretty good already. Hoping to capture these guys, they'll have a good number of burnside carbines I anticipate. See if I'm right here in a second. So they've got burnside carbines. Not my favorite. I like to get as many of the Spencers as we can, but we're still a little early war for that. It's gonna take us time to get these guys in the line. We've suffered pretty pretty light casualties so far. Let's see if we can't get this third unit to, to surrender. 
don't want to spook that guy over there, though. There's, I think that's Hildebrand's first brigade here. But McCullough's cavalry is coming up. We want to stop them. Don't want them to liberate those prisoners. Oh, he broke up into two brigades. Charge. There we go. Beautiful. And that's a good number of Colt pistols. Now, the opening phase with the cavalry is over. We've captured all the skirmishers and some of the cavalry. Cavalry is probably going to get bottled up by our infantry, so we will rest these guys up and then use them as like a QRF to try to respond to any, any screwy stuff with the infantry fight that is, that is coming. The guns are taking their sweet time getting up here, traveling through all that. I could micro them and make them travel the roadways that might get there faster, but I don't necessarily need them in action for this first part. We're going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit to get everybody in line. We will do this on echelon from right to left. Start these guys moving. We might be able to get this cavalry to surrender here real quick too. Wait until they get a little closer and then we'll charge with our cav. Hopefully we can capture them. just a little too late. They will probably disintegrate and route just as a unit entirely. We're going to use Yule and these three as a reserve. I'm going to march them preemptively. These will be good on that second half when we finally break the hornet's nest, a lot of Union units are going to be pushing right back. They're going to retreat en masse to Pittsburgh Landing. And I want to make sure that we have some guys ready to hit them and cut them off if we can. I don't think these guns are going to get in action until the late part of the first half. Cavalry is doing good. 215.85. Not so hot with the carbine cav, but we we charge with them too often. We really do. And this is where the boys start to go forward mass the cavalry here in the center. Like I said, I'm going to try to avoid capturing Chilo Church itself. I want to push past and around. McCullough, he's just going to disintegrate any time now. don't think that they're going to be able to repel this attack. We might call a hold. Just about here. Let's see if we can out volley these people. See, they're already routing. Let's see if we can't sneak the cab in. Well, they've got more units back here. We've got to be very careful about that. So 
the battle on. It's time to order double quick. Casualties and bookings. Hopefully, we can get early in these trees. Bring Sinclair up on the right. Let's get our general up here. Restore some mortar to those men. Try to get these guns into action. Seems to be going well so far. So far, so good. It's important to take your men off of the double quick often and swap out these brigades so that way you don't tire them out in the duration of the fight. It takes a long time for a unit to be inactive to recover a lot of their uh, a lot of their energy. And a unit that is exhausted or tired, their efficiency like they just immediately go to nothing. They're practically useless to a point.
crossing this field is going to be rather perilous. We might wait to do that until we until we cross here and break them on this side on the left. It may have been a bad call to charge those cavalry. In there. I'll try to get my rifles up here. This one, Wickham and Sinclair. Early's brigade. Now's the time to move these reserves. Keep up the scar. See if we can't snatch those guns too. That brigade is gone, disintegrated. Those 1,600 men. Nice, some good howitzers. They've given up. I'm gonna maneuver carving cab in the rear and harass these guys until the infantry can get up to break them. That is going to take some doing. I'm going to go ahead and take them off of the run. In Panda's mode, or in his mod, um, Taking them off of run mode will actually disable the skirmish behavior that cavalry has. Which can be very useful if you want to hold them in a position and not have them run, disengage, and then not lock back on and keep at it. That can be very useful. We're going to go ahead and advance the Stonewall Brigade. And as you can see, Harlan retired to the rear and now he's resting up. March a couple of these reserve units up here in the left hand side. A lot of Union units are going to spawn here at some point. We want to have guys in position when, uh, when that happens. Side this with a bayonet charge. It might be time for Sinclair and some of these other. Oops, look at that. More Union soldiers. Might need to pull the cavalry out. It was a bad move to put Stewart in. We might lose him. That's not good. Give him the bayonet. Let's see if we can't move these guys up.
guns up. And the supplies up to him. We've got him pinched. We've just got to move some of our less than tired brigades up. Got to give people a chance to rest up here. Been doing good work so far. I'll move them up here in case they make a charge. They need something to be in the second line. Pegram's Reserve Battalion. They're not going to be able to hold that long by themselves. Just kind of standing in the open there. into the fight. These are good shooters. Should really be able to put a hurting on these guys. But kind of antsy about putting them into the fight so early. Taking nearly 200 casualties so far and I don't want to use them up too much. They're my best troops. But at the same time we do need to keep the pressure up. I might try to bayonet charge these people out. I don't know if that's a bad idea. We are gonna try. guys to waver we might settle this with man actually. Best men are wavering, that's not good. <sighs> Antsy, I'm gonna save this just in case, but we are gonna try. We're gonna try for it. Hopefully we don't pay for this.
that's a clean wipe on the left. Now, General Bragg. You know, a lot of people are not very fond of Bragg. But I'd like to think that I have a healthy respect for the disciplinarian that that man was. Maybe he wasn't the best field commander, but you know what? I cut him a little slack. He did, he did turn a bunch of shoeless farm boys into actual soldiers. And uh, his army did do pretty good in a couple different battles, but it was definitely a failure of command. Not a failure of the men. But I quite like Braxton Bragg. We are going to go ahead and some of these brigades have broken up into two units. The duplication um, percentage value is a little bit higher. And I prefer that. I'd, I'd prefer to have smaller and more brigades than just a handful. Gives you more options. But I'm going to put the majority, I'm going to split these guys evenly, I think. And again, I'm going to avoid capturing the points. I'm going to try to wipe out their units before they get a chance to... I think I can do that what I have on hand here. I've got to put these men into line. I'm going to put Gibbon, Gibson on the uh, on the left. Char Chalmers will be the reserve. I'm going to take the remainder and put them on the right. I want to have a strong right on this because when we finally do get to the hornet's nest, I want to try to outflank that position from the right. It might not even be a bad idea to get some skirmishers off of these larger ones. I'm going to send all the guns forward. That will be the quickest route for them to get to the hornet's nest when that part of the battle does come in. We've got some big batteries, like 37 guns apiece. That is good. You can see the efficiency of these is not that great, and that is because even though they have scaled larger, the ranks of the officers are still the same, so that greatly affects the uh, efficiency. Which again, I feel like even though we outnumber the Union in this, they definitely have better weapons. Most of my core that I brought was armed with smooth bores and a, a motley assortment of rifles. But this will give them, I suppose, a bit more of a chance to put up a put up a fight. Go ahead and just march straight forward. Again, we are gonna push up here. But the real attack is going to be on this left side. We're going to push around, push these people out of these fields. Hopefully, we might halt that now until these guys on the right can get into position. Because when I sweep that, I want to come in from the right side and encircle whatever is over here. There should be a good number of units there. It'll also give us time to put these guns forward, even though we're already under fire. But we want to, yeah, we want to march straight through this gap. We know that there's going to be one Union unit here, but we've got skirmishers and two small brigades. We outnumber the two to one more, and uh, we should hopefully be able to surround that unit and compel it to surrender. Hatch Jackson from that flank and push him right into coming from the rear of that. A lot of these troops too are armed with smooth bores. Everybody is, it looks like. Not a single rifle. Sad. We'll get the job done though.
think charging will tire these troops out fast. That is preferable if we can get these guys to surrender. Hoping to take lots of prisoners. Just give it up. Throw down. rifles. Here's General Breckenridge's troops have just arrived. Pawns men shake out of the battle line there. But I want to move these guys just straight forward at the best possible speed. So that way. I think that's all we're going to get. We're going to get some guns later on, but these brigades did not break up into smaller units. But that's good because we've got some weighty, weighty brigades to really throw into the line. Get Ingersoll to just surrender. Be good. Get those supplies and then hopefully those skirmishers. Yoink. I'll just try to push these all towards friendlies. chance to free those cavalry, even at the cost of this friendly cav here, even though it's not mine, I really shouldn't throw them away, but we're going to make them fight today.
should have should have been more prudent and got those guns sooner. I forgot about them. I'm gonna keep these supplies up here. We might need those later on in the fight. We start running out of cartridges. We have to turn the Yankees' bullets on themselves. Finish that out with a bayonet charge, I hope. Capture this point because we're about to wrap this section up. Hopefully we can just get these people to throw down. It's kind of hopeless for them. We outnumbered him a good deal on this front. able to push left and around the hornet's nest and avoid this open ground once we outflank them with these units on the left hand side and on this right hand side we'll push in these two weighty brigades and push right through these guys out, rest them up in the next section, probably capture those guys too. Speed this up a little bit. They threw down, we can just get Williams to throw. I don't really want those units in my rear when I'm... It's one thing I, I noticed the last time I played Shiloh is that I had some enemy units appear out of the ether and really trip me up a little bit. We need to move our brigades and get them moved and organized a little bit better. That's kind of a precarious situation. Move the guns up, treat these guys. In fact, we will probably move these up here. So we're ready to spring the trap on the hornet's nest. But I want to keep the supplies. Make sure we get rid of all these prisoners. Gonna go ahead and order in advance. Try to outflank the hornet's nest. Hold these guys here. Order them to just withdraw. Bring up the guns, bring the drag. It's gonna take a while for the other guns to get up. We won't be in the fight for a while. These two units need to get up here. skirmishers back to scout a little bit. I feel like I don't have enough men on this right hand side. And I hope I'm not weakening this front too much. I would be devastated if I lost Bragg. I like to keep him as a either a core commander or a I'm just in 
infatuated with disciplinarians, I'm not sure why. Daddy issues, I guess. Take them a while to get out of the swamp, rest up and join the fight. Martin Ridge. He's also a. I think he dies at Gettysburg. He's killed there, which is really unfortunate. I mean, just as a character, he's very interesting. Former vice president, I believe? Turned Confederate general? Really extraordinary. I know in real life, they brought up as many guns as they could to blast the Federals out of the Hornet's Nest. Now, we haven't massed all the guns that we could. It's going to take them time to get up, but we're just going to envelop these, these fools and see if we can't just compel them to surrender. Which they did at the Battle of Shiloh. I think, um, I can't remember the officer's name, but his, his entire division, I think, just surrender. I don't know if it was a division or... I know it was more than a brigade. 2,000 some prisoners? Something like that? I should have been paying attention there, that was not good. What a fool I've been. Such a small battle to manage to, like, this is not even much. I should not have missed that rookie mistake. Gotta be mindful of the ironclads.
might detach the cavalry. Just to make sure. Nothing sneaks up behind me. That was something that I faced last time I played this, I had brigades that showed up behind me like Thayer's Brigade. I had no idea where these people came from. in our way through the last line of defense probably. other side and we have to put something in line over here to stop them. In fact I'm going to This can be very frustrating to organize these guys and try to get them I'm not about to let Union Cavalry free all of these prisoners behind me. That is not going to happen.
where it gets nightmarish to try to manage everything. Some of the later battles can be a real headache on that. I mean, a lot of the pros pause and stop and pause and stop. I don't feel like that's authentic enough for me. I, I like to... It's like I, I saved once in this and I didn't even really need to. I gambled on a bayonet charge and it worked out, but... I like to accept the consequences of the failures of command. Some of those later battles can turn into a real, real nightmare, a real bloody show. Hopefully Martin's Brigade will draw a lot of the fire from those uh, ironclads so we can get the rest of the boys in here un unharmed. The ground of Shiloh makes it really, really hard to maneuver. I mean, anything quickly. And my guys are getting tired. It's not good. Not good at all. And this Union infantry has just disappeared. There should be quite a few of them over here, and they've vanished into thin air. Probably still over here. See an opportunity to snatch up some guns. Oh yeah, now we're talking. But I want to know, is that infantry crossed the bridge and gone a long way, or what, what are they doing? Oh, there they are. They're in the swamp. Oh, I've got them now. to put these men in the line. They are still in the swamp. Cut them off. Dismount the cavalry. Put them here. Hopefully Early's brigade or Yule's brigade will get on the other side and cut these people off. We've got the ground. Excited about that. See if there's supplies on that side or if they just, just sent some stragglers. Well, it's time to finish these people off at Pittsburgh Landing. We'll push them right into the water if we can. Just send everybody forward. There's no more tactics here, it's just a wave of men. guys can give a good account of themselves today. These are really, really fresh and raw recruits.
should have sent more. There was no reason that I didn't. It was a foolish thing to send so few men. some of these guys back so they don't take unnecessary casualties just from those gunboats, the ironclads, that would be bad. I shouldn't have done that when they were wavering. It was a foolish thing to have done. Very nice. Ah, oh, Yule has been killed. Oh my god. I paid for all of those mistakes by losing some of my favorite commanders for the rest of this campaign. They're not coming back. It is, uh, rather unfortunate. We haven't lost Jackson yet. <laughs> I shouldn't say anything, but, you know. I like Jackson, I'd be heartbroken if we lost him. Even though you will end with a property to my favorites. Go ahead and speed this up for time's sake. more when you're in the Confederacy, right? guns to knock out those ironclads just for the fun of it. By some off chance that an ironclad can liberate prisoners. Make sure that they don't uh that they don't do that.
capture or kill them all. I'll just take Trebow and put them on the put them on the side to spot these ironclads. First, one of those just for the fun of it. Let's see if we missed anybody. Send the scouts. The prisoner number of this is going to be very interesting. I wonder how many prisoners we managed to take. Should be a good number. Nearly 20,000. But we suffered pretty, pretty light casualties. All said and done. We really didn't have that much more infantry than them. That was a pretty fair fight. I mean, all things considered. About 20,000 of them got away. Gosh. We lost Yule and Early. They were going to be Brigadiers so soon, too. That's just not good. Good number of Colts, Springfields, Lorenz rifles. Man. That was... Wasn't nearly as bad as what I thought it could be. But we got Johnson. And Forrest. I really like Forrest, just as a cavalry commander, he's reading about him through the war is just amazing. He pulled things off that I would have never thought possible. And our prisoners, we got 2,500 back on parole. So, I think we're going to go ahead and call it here, and then when we come back we'll start jumping into these minor battles. We'll probably do first Winchester over again because... We did it once ahead of schedule for my buddy. He was having a lot of trouble with that, and he asked me to record it early so that way he could get some tips and tricks. But we're going to go ahead and uh, probably start with that one and work our way down. And then Gaines Mill. Gaines Mill is another really fun battle. Um, after that, the next battle is just an absolute slugfest, Malvern Hill. I hate that one. Uh, you see in the thumbnail card for these videos, Rebel Tears, well, we'll be shedding quite a few at fucking Malvern Hill because that battle breaks my heart. <laughs> but thanks for watching, guys, and we'll uh, see you in the next one.